Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rogues Cast, where we talk about stuff we want to talk about, uh, topics, things that's on our minds, and stuff like that. So today we wanted to talk about the uh, the big debacle that's going on with Blizzard and Diablo Immortal, because that's a hot topic right now. Yeah, you actually just brought it to my attention here recently. I didn't know any of this was going on. I was just like, <laughs> how did I miss this? Yeah, because I remember like literally just earlier today, I told you, did you know that Blizzard is like under heavy fire right now? And you were like, no, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> how did I, how did this miss me? So, so enlighten everyone at home for us. So basically, um, BlizzCon, which is Blizzard's big convention that they have every year, uh, it recently went down. And um, before the BlizzCon event took place, uh, Blizzard was hyping up what their like big, big, like mega announcement was going to be for the convention. And... Um, they were hyping it up to be something related to the Diablo series. Yeah, which um, is one of their bigger titles, but I don't know how well it's done since Diablo 2. Yeah, well, I, I know Diablo 3 is still pretty active right now. You know, Diablo 3 just came out on the Nintendo Switch, so that's cool. Okay. Um, so, and people are still playing it pretty regularly. Um, I know it had some uh, had a rough start, but it seems yeah, to have gotten better I, now. Yeah, because I played at launch, and there was some horrible imbalance things at the beginning of the game yeah not to mention the auction house thing that they were trying to do i remember hearing about that i've never played diablo 3 but yeah i remember they were trying to monetize real world money with the auction house at the beginning and uh yeah they yeah were, that didn't that didn't end well they removed that post haste from what i remember mm -hmm. but um but anyway diablo is one of blizzard's biggest uh franchises alongside world uh war warcraft and starcraft yeah, etc yeah, yeah warcraft starcraft and then Diablo and Diablo and Overwatch are kind of their four big babies right now. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, you know, leading up to this year's BlizzCon, they were like hyping up, like we got a big Diablo announcement coming up. And they were obviously like building up like this which, massive hype, and... which is great because Diablo three has been out for quite some time. They have released, you know, updates to it, kind of like what they do with World of Warcraft mm -hmm. to keep it kind of fresh. But so with the amount of hype that they were building up with this announcement, um, People, you know, were thinking, you know, either Diablo 4 or maybe even Diablo 2 Remastered. Um, these were the two things that people were expecting. Some were uh, expecting possibly an expansion for Diablo 3. Um, but either way, Diablo was like hyping up this big announcement. They were getting all their fans super excited and everybody was like ready to see what this big announcement was going to be. Um, so um, BlizzCon came. And uh, they got to the the big highlight of the show, which is the big Diablo announcement that they were hyping up like crazy. And um, so they, they started hyping up Diablo and then they started talking about smart devices and connecting with friends and family. And then the crowd suddenly knew where this was going. Oh, no. It was a mobile game. Diablo Immortal was announced, and that was the highlight of their show that they were hyping up. Oh, no. And it was a motherfucking mobile game. <laughs> so, that's just... That's just wrong. Yeah. Like, that's that's really misleading your fan base, and, and especially with that amount of hype. I don't think they were intentionally doing that, but I think they misjudged what their fan base wanted. Now, I will say this. Mobile-friendly things are exploding all over the mm -hmm. place. People, like, even, uh, even in, like, the film industry... There's all sorts of mobile friendly editing programs coming out now to where you can edit on the go on your phone. And I cannot imagine myself it, doing that, that kind of <laughs> stuff. But that's where a lot of the market is going. So I can't really blame Blizzard for at least taking a look at, you know, this. But even at what was it? I think E3 we talked about. Mm hmm. They announced a, a big Command and Conquer thing, and it was a little mobile game, and it didn't go over so well. So at that point, that would have raised a red flag if I was a game developer, because if I was a game developer, I would be paying attention to E3, that yeah. <laughs> maybe we need to reevaluate this. Now, if it was a game that was alongside another platform, 
of like a console or PC and you can play it on mobile, then cool. I still get the choice of what I want to play it on. And that's that's the biggest cardinal sin right here is that they went whole hog on one platform and they it's didn't It's the platform that nobody wants. And <laughs> that's that's the caveat is Blizzard has always been a heavily North American focused like gaming community now i will say like starcraft and overwatch they have huge like uh like oriental countries like uh, Mm -hmm. korea and japan and some other countries over there they have a a huge following i remember talking i hearing all the time about like korean streamers and professionals like playing starcraft and overwatch and uh that kind of element so they do have a lot of like uh, abroad, like fans. Yeah, no, Blizzard has a very dedicated fan base across a multitude of different games. That is without a hint yeah, of a doubt. But it's just they o- over <sighs> abroad. The game market is extremely mobile friendly. They play a lot of stuff mobile, and I I can understand why, just because it's very convenient, and also they have extremely reliable uh, phone service. Mm-hmm. over there sorry i'm looking up uh, uh, uh something that like the diablo 2 uh director said about this whole dia- debacle i can't remember exactly yeah what he said. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment yeah so um but it's just o- over i want to say in the asian market m- mobile friendly stuff does really really well mm-hmm. but in north america it's just not something that has really caught on mobile gaming for like there's two spheres that you have to view it in is there's 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 casual gamers mobile gamers and then hardcore gamers right hardcore gamers absolutely abhor mobile games because you don't have the amount of tactile input that uh playing a game as precisely as we're used as like to. a mouse and keyboard or a control stick or something yeah. like that and I, I'm, I have tried using those like digital pads that are on the phones and stuff, and I hate it. I can't I stand absolutely it. Absolutely, I, I, I just, I can't understand why so many people are into mobile gaming. Like, I know people who spend like an enormous amount of time gaming on their phones now, and I'm just like, how and why? Now, when there's better platforms available, I that's, don't get that's it. That's why I love my Switch is because it gives me the buttons and the inputs to actually do it. Now, I will say there are a lot of accessories that give you those button controls that you can actually plug into your phone, which yeah. I think is great. But it's not portable. But I'm not buying a phone for a gaming experience. I'm buying a phone so I can stay in contact with everybody. Yeah, stay in contact with, the, contact with everybody. And if I want smart features, maybe watch some YouTube videos, Netflix or Hulu or something, and check Facebook and internet and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm not going to do any like major gaming on my phone. Yeah, because and I, just I want don't... something a little bit more robust. Exactly. Now, um, I, I was trying to uh, look up a uh, a tweet from uh, just now uh, from the Diablo, the director of uh, Diablo Two. He's not working for Blizzard anymore, um, but he he had something to say about the the whole debacle with Blizzard right now. Um, um, I do don't you, remember do you exactly. Want to paraphrase it. Uh, I'll paraphrase it later. Uh, I'll come back to that. Uh, I just wanted to try and pull it up uh, for later, but I couldn't find it. But um, to further clarify the debacle that's going on, because we kind of went on like a mobile gaming thing right there, which it, it, it's all stuff that needed yeah. to be said well, for that, sure. That was the, that was the first big problem with their announcement. Is yeah. That is definitely the biggest problem. And, and I, then it was a mobile game and yeah, with BlizzCon being based in North America, you know, the audience right there in, in BlizzCon is not going to be happy. Exactly. And so then they made it worse. Yeah. So and I'll let you explain this one. So, um, so I'll, I'll go into that, um, right now. Uh, so, they they held a Q&A session on stage. Now, keep in mind, the, the, the designers of this, well, I mean, for, well, not really the designers of this particular game because they're actually outsourcing this game to a Chinese indie company, which I, I, I don't get it because Blizzard is well known for developing most of their games in-house. But in this instance, they said they're, they decided to outsource it. But okay. So the basically the people in charge of this project were on stage in front of a huge crowd of people and they held a Q&A session. And you know, mm, some people which... came up and asked some general questions. 
Um, there was one guy, I can't remember his name, but he's uh, kind of a famous Diablo streamer. And I'll let the, uh, the editor, uh, go ahead and post a, a clip of that, um, onto this video so people can see the clip for themselves. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any, uh, yeah, this, this, the current plan is to be on mobile, both, uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do, do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, phone. right? So as you saw in the video, this guy came up and uh, asked them, is there any plans to bring this uh, in, into PC? Or is it strictly mobile forever? And the, the guy on stage responded by saying, um, you know, it's mobile right now, Android and iOS. We have no plans at this time to bring this game to PC. And the crowd booed them. Yeah. And, and if, if they had left it at that and just accepted the jeers, they could have saved the situation. They could have gone into development, gone you know back behind closed doors and be like, okay, we have a bunch of people that are really mad about us releasing this only on mobile. Maybe we should consider porting it to PC or something. But then they made it worse by saying, do you guys not have phones? Seriously, what the heck? Yeah. And Are you kidding me, Blizzard? That really? Is something you never do. <laughs> That's especially PR. to a gamer is you do not <laughs> you do not make assumptions and you do not <laughs> react out of just pure emotion because it will never end well. <laughs> yeah, that was just like when I saw that, like it was already bad enough that they, they it, it was uh, the situation. The situation was already bad enough. But then as soon as they said that, do you guys not have phones? I just like I couldn't help but lean back and just go, oh, my God, they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> that and it's not something that you so do. enlighten us. How did the gamer market respond? So they are under heavy fire right now, and not just from their own fan base, but also from the stock uh, holders as well, shareholders. Their stock dipped 10%. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Especially is. with how potent Blizzard has been because they've released a recent World of Warcraft expansion that has actually been really popular. And then they also have Overwatch, which has done extremely well, especially in the competitive market. Blizzard has done so well for themselves, and now and they just have this it massive just, step. It seems horrible that they were so out of touch with their fan base. Yeah, well, like, it, there, there was actually a uh, another kind of uh, conference that these guys held at a later time after BlizzCon had ended, and it got even worse from there. Um, they stated that you know, Diablo Immortal is not the 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 last major mobile title that they're going to be releasing. Oh, they've no. also they've also they also confirmed that not only are they going to be releasing more mobile titles for all their IPs, they also have all their best developers working on these mobile games. Oh no! So yeah. So that <laughs> pretty much what you're saying is like the next. Four years of Blizzard is just going to be mobile focused game development. And there is now, they nothing did, wrong th with making games for mobile. Now, I will say this real quick. I will say this. They did say that there are multiple Diablo projects in the works, one of which is Diablo 4. They don't have anything to present with Diablo 4 yet, but that has been confirmed that it is in development, but they have nothing to show. But the fact that they made this like mobile announcement such a hyped up thing and then they announced all their best teams are on mobile development it just goes to show like where this company is putting their priorities right now yeah and that is not looking favorable for their fans it's really not and, and that's the thing is like now that i've heard that as a fan i would be like well i guess i'm not going to be getting any new blizzard titles for quite some time because that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a mobile gaming. I want a very detailed story experience 
that I am interacting as a member of that story. Mm -hmm. That's why I loved the original World of Warcraft is because I played Warcraft 2, I played Warcraft 3, I never got a chance to play the original Warcraft. But it was just like, I love the story and the world. And then when World of Warcraft came out, I was just like, I get to be a member of one of these races that have these detailed histories and stories and I can be immersed in that world. That was exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Now this is, I mean, I I'm an outsider looking in when it comes to the blizzard community, I've never been a big fan of blizzards games. Yeah. Personally, the only game that blizzard has ever developed that I've played is overwatch. That is the only Blizzard game I, I've ever bought and ever played. And even then, I don't really play it that much. Yeah. I only play it whenever, like, you guys are, you know, like, you, Taylor, and Wade are online playing. Yeah. And I'm and just like, I'll join you guys. You later. you play a lot more uh, gamer, game fo like, gameplay focused stuff and not so much, like, the, uh, the tactical RPGs. Yeah, like, and plus, I'm not one that usually gets competitive in games. Like, the only game I like feel like I can like I typically get competitive in is Smash Brothers but other than that I mean there's like typically you know especially with shooters you know Overwatch or whatever the case may be I don't really feel like I want to get competitive with them yeah so you know I'm an outsider looking in on this situation but I can definitely see why the fan base is so frustrated because we saw the exact same thing happen at E3 this year when EA started showing off this random mobile game that nobody knew what it was and nobody really cared, but they spent like a huge portion of their E3 presentation showing this game off. And then at the end of the presentation, everybody was like, Oh my God, finally, they're finally ending this mobile game presentation. And then they announced it's a new command and conquer. Yeah. Like, are Which, you kidding me? People makes have me been sad. Cause I've wanted a classic command and conquer for so long. I know. And it was just it, so many command and conquer games, which again, I'm a person looking in, I've never played them, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not a person who typically gets into like tactical RTS yeah. or whatever, well, but, I, but I think, I think it would be better to describe them as like resource management kind of games where like you maybe, have to balance like unit production and everything. I, yeah, well, I mean, command games like command and conquer and Starcraft are typically not games I'm usually yeah. into, but anyway, I, I can understand the fan outrage because it's like people have been waiting so long for a new command and conquer game. Now they finally get one and it's a mobile game. Mm hmm. Like, okay, I get it. I get it. Mobile gaming is big right now. You know, there's a lot of people who like to play games on their mobile phones. I get it. But the fan base of Command & Conquer are not those people. Okay, it, look, it, I had a coworker at my job tell me something. He said, there's nothing inherently wrong with Diablo Immortal existing as a way to spread the game abroad beyond the fan base and get more people on yeah. board with Diablo IP. I get that. That's fine. If you want to bring more people into Diablo with a mobile title, that's definitely that's a way to do it. Perfectly fine. But the way that Blizzard is handling it is so much alienating their fan base. It's in, it's insane. Well, like I'll give I'll the give way you, that they described it is like this is the future of the franchise. Yeah, exactly. That's where they went wrong. Yeah, and that's where it like I, I, it almost I like it seems like they the developers of this new Diablo game are genuinely thinking that their fan base wants this. Yeah. And it's just, if you really think that your fan base wants this, that shows that you're out of touch with your fan base. Mm -hmm. Because this is, Diablo Immortal is not a game that the fans want. And they are very clearly making that statement. That point, yeah. yeah they're, they're very clearly making that point right now. And the, the, the point has been made so clear that their shares dropped 10%. So, yeah, like Blizzard heavily misjudged what their fan base wants. Mm -hmm. Again, it's fine if you want to spread Diablo to another fan base. There's nothing wrong with Diablo Immortal existing. But here's what Blizzard should have done to better handle it. Okay, look, it's fine. You want to make Diablo Immortal fun. What they should have done then was maybe handle it the same way bethesda handles it because let's review how bethesda has uh handled re um revealing their mobile titles uh fallout shelter they announced that a couple years ago i can't remember what year it was at e3 yeah and fallout shelter was like their big new fallout mobile game 
Um, it's like, okay, cool. Uh, cool little Fallout experience on the go on mobile. And then they immediately followed that up with, hey, we haven't forgotten about the core fans. Here's Fallout 4. Yeah. Now, to go even further than that, earlier this year at E3, they announced Elder Scrolls Blades, a new Elder Scrolls game for mobile. Okay, looks cool. Not quite what I'm looking for in an Elder Scrolls game, though. But they followed that up with, hey, don't worry. Elder Scrolls 6 is coming. Exactly. And th that's what they should have done, is they should have added a teaser for Diablo 4, letting people know, hey, we haven't forgot about the hardcore PC people. That is exactly what you described. Uh -huh. Bethesda did it beautifully. It's just like Bethesda does it exactly the, the right way. There is a mobile game, and there's nothing wrong with mobile games. They are a, a niche market that is definitely growing right now, and it's I can understand huge, wanting a, to capitalize yeah, on it. It's a that. huge market right now, and there's nothing that's going to get more people on board for your franchise than making a mobile game on it because there's going to be more people playing the mobile game then mm -hmm. the, a mobile game is going to bring more people into that franchise than because Diablo it's, 3 it's will. easily accessible because you don't have to have a high end rig or a console to play the game. Exactly. So but that's if fine. Your company, if your entire company has been built with the backbone of PC oriented gameplay with some miss and match ports to console, but PC has been your bread and butter why would you alienate your PC market? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I get it. They want to bring in more people, but you like basically what Blizzard, the, what this shows is that Blizzard is starting to lose track of their identity. And that is where I think people are really concerned. And that's and why I think to be people are making honest, a big fuss. I just think that's a growing problem with game development companies as a whole. Yeah. Cause that's one of the reasons why I'm such a lover of Nintendo because Nintendo, like, okay, Nintendo has made, a whole bunch of fuck ups. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pretend like they don't. Nintendo messes up on a lot of shit. Yeah. But if there's one thing I love about Nintendo, it's that they don't forget who they are. Mm -hmm. And that is a big reason or why I love them. Who they're making games for. Exactly, and that's a big reason why I love them. The best kind of companies in this industry are the companies that don't forget where they came from, what their backbone is, and who their identity. What their identity is, and who. Their market is. Yeah. What Blizzard is showing right now is that they're starting to lose track of that identity. And that is a very glaring problem. Because mm -hmm. after World of Warcraft floundered for a little bit, they didn't... Uh, luckily, Overwatch kind of, I think, pulled them up from potential, like, financial, you know, despair. Because StarCraft 2 did okay, but I don't think it did nearly as good, especially the DLCs. I don't think it did nearly as good as the original StarCraft. Mm -hmm. Um, and then once you got past, uh, like wrath of the Lich King with world of Warcraft, they, the numbers and a, a number of accounts that they had, you know, dropped drastically <laughs> because the main character of the, of Warcraft three, which was such a beloved game. Uh, he was the big bad boss for that, that, uh, that expansion. So a lot of people is just like, okay, the story I was invested in is now wrapped up in Wrath of the Lich King on World of Warcraft. I have nothing else to go, you know, I don't have any other investment in this. Mm -hmm. So it's just going from those years, I think I, I can understand you. Sometimes you have to shake things up to keep, you know, content fresh and moving everything along. And so after that, they struggled for quite some time until Overwatch, which was kind of an offshoot pro like a side idea project. It wasn't yeah. even one of their main projects exploded again. And that's the, that's my big problem with blizzard is that, and th this is just really hard in the game industry. So I don't want to, to sound overly critical, but they are not a consistent developer mm -hmm. in terms of quality. And if it's saying like something like Overwatch was not something that they had dedicated a ton of resources into until it exploded and absolutely crushed its rival of, uh, well, that's, that just goes to show, I can't even remember the name of that other game that came out. That was kind of its rival. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't Borderlands. It was that other thing that was kind of, it felt like Borderlands, like in terms of the art style. Uh, was it something made by Blizzard? No, no. Why would Blizzard compete with themselves? Uh, <laughs> that's just silly. Um, God, I can't. Uh, Battleborn, Battleborn, Battleborn. Okay. Yeah, Battleborn was the name of it, I believe. 
And it was just like, you know, Overwatch absolutely stomped Battleborn uh, because Battleborn had all of this extra bloat, weird percentile mis, you know, management of resources and stuff. It was just horrible. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible experience in terms of like actually getting yeah, your yeah. character outfitted to play. But the the thing with Overwatch is they they stripped down all of the unnecessary you know min maxing nonsense to where all it is is purely skill level and game knowledge that determines how well you can play the game. And that is a wonderful thing. And that's why Overwatch was one of the best games that Blizzard had come up come mm-hmm. up with for a really long and time. And I haven't had a game scratch that TF2 itch in a long time. I've been waiting for a game to fill that void that TF2 has kind of left. Yep. And Overwatch has kind of filled that. Yeah. So. And so it it's a beautiful game. But then they re- they released, you know, like Diablo 3 had a shaky launch. Um, some of the World of Warcraft expansions, like the topic matter was kind of meh. And then you come out with now this mobile game as kind of the future of multiple projects. No. <laughs> yeah. I, it also feels like Blizzard has just kind of gotten pretty full of themselves like again that comment of that guy saying do you guys not have phones like it's very similar to a few years ago when i heard a story about like um there is this new expansion for uh, world of warcraft that got announced and a lot of people were starting to leave the game because they didn't like what the game was starting to become and a lot of people wanted to be able to replay vanilla world of warcraft again and there was you know there, there were people coming up with like their own kind of like uh, custom servers to run vanilla world of Warcraft. And there were a lot of people like they were highly successful servers, but unfortunately they had to get taken down because blizzard went after them and you know, it wasn't yeah. a lot, now, but will... now, but what, uh, hang on uh, real quick. And uh, so at, at another BlizzCon a few years ago, somebody asked them, you know, I mean, is there any plans to maybe, you know, bring out some, uh, some vanilla world of Warcraft servers, because there's some people who, who really want to play World of Warcraft when it when it was back in its vanilla days? Mm-hmm. And their response was very full of themselves again. Their response was, "No, and trust me, you don't want to do that. You think you want it, but you don't." That right now, that's a, <laughs> that is a cardinal sin of We're, a game developer. Blizzard just you never tell your audience what they want it's funny because now they are going to come out with vanilla world of warcraft servers because of that backlash exactly <laughs> so you do not do that you had one of your loyal fans tell you exactly what they wanted and they would probably pay money for and, and you're then telling you them said no. no you don't want your this. opinion does not matter and we are not going to waste money on something that you, our, con- our customer, our consumer, our target audience, have told us you want. <laughs> Why? What, what, what series of synapses misfired in your brain? Again, this is just a sign that Blizzard has lost track and of their I'm, identity. I'm just wondering if it's a difference between the executives running the company and the people actually building the game. Because, like, uh, Jeff, I believe it was Jeff Kaplan, the, the guy that uh, developed Overwatch... Uh, they actually pulled him in because he was, uh, I don't want to say a forum troll, but he was very, very active in forums for other games. And they were just like, Hey, we see you're very passionate about this. Why don't you come and be a member of the development team? And he's Mm -hmm. like, okay. Pulling from your audience to develop a game for fellow gamers sounds like a brilliant idea because he's in touch with what the game market wants. That's why Overwatch did so good. He knew, he knew <laughs> firsthand what game developers wanted. But when you start getting corporate executives with business degrees that aren't immersed in the gaming uh, community in terms of a player on the consumer side of it, they it's so easy to lose touch because I can understand you're getting busy. You have you know business meetings, you're organizing and running an entire business, which is no easy task. No easy task. So I don't want to like specifically call out executives or anything in particular. But if you are not 
immersed in the gaming culture, then I don't, it's hard to say because at that point you're an outlier and you're more susceptible to making a bad decision. Yeah. And when you think you know something and that's the, the, I always love the saying is when you assume it makes an ass out of you and me, (laughs) that applies to this scenario. Yes, exactly. (laughs) It's funny because uh, like, I I think I mentioned this uh, earlier in the stream because I was trying to look up the tweets, but uh, the the producer who uh, who uh, the producer of um, Diablo two he used to work for Blizzard but he doesn't anymore. Um, I think he uh, left Blizzard in two thousand six if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually tweeted out about this whole debacle, and he pretty much said exactly what I was thinking. He said, "What you're currently seeing is Blizzard losing track of who they are." Um, when I was working for Blizzard, um, it was literally run by gamers, and if we were try- if we were about to make a decision that gamers thought was a bad idea, I would have people outside my door telling me, this is a bad move, you shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he left Blizzard in 2006. Now, I can't remember when the Blizzard acquisition occurred from Activision, but I feel like, and I think there's some people who agree with this too, I feel like Blizzard has, like, the beginning of Blizzard losing their identity started happening with Activision acquiring blizzard and well it's just and that's the unfortunate thing is that it's a business yes exactly and a business their their goal is to make money Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with making money i love making money because (laughs) everybody loves making money i need to pay my (laughs) bills there's nothing wrong with making entertaining games for people to enjoy in their everyday lives and then trying to get those games out on as many platforms as possible that is a good move. But when you not only insult or ignore, and that's the big one, ignore your fans and consumers, guess what's going to happen? No one will buy your games. <laughs> because... Not to mention the fact that um not to mention the fact that this game is probably going to be loaded with microtransactions and shit. And that's the thing. Money's already tight with all the other stuff that's you know, available. And it's just like, you want me to go buy, you know, a, a several hundred dollar phone so I can play your mobile game. It's just, you know, the reason that mobile gaming is even successful in the first place is because phones have just become so powerful already. And everybody already kinds of need access to the internet or communication for safety purposes or other things. So making games for something that everybody, uh, is already either has or planning to have just because it's so versatile Uh is not a dumb idea. It's a brilliant idea, but we, (laughs) you need to make sure (laughs) that the gaming audience that has built the entire backbone of the gaming industry, do not forget who your mobile is a recent development, but video games have been developed on consoles and PCs for decades decades you can't leave them just you know in the lurch exactly don't forget who your customers are because those customers are the ones who are actually giving you money for your products and and it's just they've been fans longer than anyone else yes again and i get it they want to get diablo out to more people but you cannot alienate your core audience because that core audience i guarantee you the majority of them, especially considering this this uh, outrage that's going on right now at Blizzard, like Blizzard, you have to understand what you're doing right now is ge- is upsetting people to the point that they're not going to buy into this. Oh, uh, trust me, I I <laughs> would not be surprised if in a very short amount of time, we, or whenever the game actually launches, that they will make another announcement saying, "Hey, this is also going to be on PC," or some. <laughs> Or some other information, uh, or I would even potentially seeing some heads roll for this decision. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to get this this thought out here because I had this earlier. Is okay. You said that they outsourced this game, which I did not know earlier. Yeah, this. So that that's another thing is that Blizzard is well known for making a lot of their games in house. Yeah. But this is a game that's being outsourced to a Chinese company. Not only that, but. They're like this Chinese company has actually come up with their own uh, their own games. I can't remember the names of them, but uh, these games uh, that they've developed before partnering partnering with Blizzard are actually very similar 
to what we're seeing from Diablo Immortal. In fact, it's too similar. Oh, so they just <laughs> they reused a lot of stuff and just well, like, cranked out a, a something. lot of people. A lot of people are comparing the footage from this developer's game and comparing it to the footage that we've seen from Diablo so it's Immortal. Kind of like and a it's reskin. Basic, it's basically a reskin. Yeah, and I'm not opposed to that personally. Mm -hmm. as, as long as the gameplay and the mechanics are good, I can play it with the characters that I know and love. I don't think because. For me personally, outsourcing it to a company in China that has made mobile games before and they're wanting to target a mobile audience, that makes sense because that's where the market is for mobile yeah, games. Yeah, because in in Asian markets, mobile gaming is and huge. That makes sense. I can understand why they would outsource it because they haven't made a mobile game before. I think that was a good move. But in terms of advertising it and producing it for your core audience, they handled it just so haphazardly it's, and now I, I wanted to ask this is the the people that were on stage were they all, were they from blizzard or were they from they were from blizzard okay so they were from blizzard yeah okay. they were from blizzard cuz i was i was wondering if it might have been like somebody from the other company like actually advertising I, 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 again I, i'm not a huge fan of blizzard personally uh but i do know the the guy the when i showed you the video the guy who um was responding saying we have no plans to bring this to pc at the moment I know that he's kind of like a big figure among the Blizzard fan base. I can't remember the guy's name, okay. but um, again, I, so then I, at that point, there's no excuse. They just handled it so poorly. Mm -hmm. They they really did. And again, like if they had handled it the same way that Blizzard handled it, I mean not Blizzard, uh, Bethesda. I got the bees mixed up. Um, and just like you know, downplay the announcement of Diablo Immortal and say, hey, we got a cool new Diablo game coming out on mobile so you now had so now if you want you can play diablo on mobile however that's not the only diablo game we got coming out here's a teaser for diablo 4 or diablo 2 remastered or whatever the heck you're working on next mm -hmm. you know like as long as you handle it like that the same way that bethesda did it you would have gotten a lot more favorability because then yeah. people are like hey you know the fan base is getting the game that they want and if they want to try diablo on mobile they can and the mobile game will reach a broader audience Everybody wins. Yeah, you need to you need to kind of weave an intricate tapestry of games when you're announcing them. Because especially with a mobile game in North America, there is a huge underlying stigma against them in the yes, gaming there market. Is. And as a game developer, you have to be aware of that stigma. So if you want to announce a mobile game, you need to also like side announce it with something else that they really want locally. Exactly. Like to give you a perfect example, like lately I've actually been kind of been kind of interested in trying a Diablo game. I don't know where to start personally. So if you want to get the Diablo franchise out to more people, I'd be more than happy to see what Blizzard can come out with in terms of a new Diablo game, but it's not going to be a mobile game. That's not going to be what gets me on playing and Diablo. That it's just, that's just not a. I've never. Uh, this is just me pers talking from personal experience. Yeah. And again, I'm talking for personal. There experience has as well. only been one game that I have enjoyed playing on mobile. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Yeah. And they handled that <laughs> poorly too, uh, in terms of development. But I that was augmented reality and that's yeah. completely different. But the reason I enjoyed playing it is because I had friends playing it with me. And that's the biggest thing that you lack a lot of times with mobile games is you don't have other people to play with. Well, I think my, my biggest problem with uh, playing games on mobile is two things. One, I hate the controls. I, I, I just, I hate, the touchscreen controls. I, I, yeah. I don't like that. My thumb is covering portions of the screen. I don't like the fact that I got no tactical feedback from whenever I like, there's no accuracy in terms of how I can detect if the inputs are accurate or not. I just, I hate yeah. the controls. And the second reason why I hate mobile gaming is because it's so damn pushy with monetization with microtransactions. Like that's how these games like thrive on mobile yeah. is with like, They say, you know, it's a free to download game, download it for free. Um, okay. So you get to this one part of the game. Oh, wait, sorry. You can't go to the next level for 24 hours, but you can bypass that now for $5. Yeah. Fuck me. I'm put, I'm freaking uninstalling this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the other thing is 
they will uh, allow you to play up to a certain point, and then you have to watch an advertisement, and then you can yes, go back that to the too. game. And it's just like they're trying to find alternative ways to fund games because gamers have already made it like they've planted their flag in the ground and they're saying, I am not buying a game for more than 60 bucks. <laughs> the game development companies have to deal with it. And so that's where the whole microtransaction thing came around. It's like, OK, you won't pay more than 60 bucks for a game because the price of games hasn't increased in God knows how long. Well, we need to find another way to make money. Okay, so let's go with more numerous transactions at a smaller dividend, essentially, to r make it feel like you're not paying as much. And but, you know what? That's fine. I, I, look, I, I tolerate but microtransactions. It's when they it's, strong arm it like that. Exactly. So, like, that's what I was about to say. Like, look, you want to have microtransactions in your game? Fine. I'll tolerate them. As long as it's nothing that affects the gameplay, okay? If you want to do purely cosmetic stuff, you know, people want to dress up their guns or their characters or whatnot, and they want to pay money for that. You know what? Let them do that. I'll go about my business, and I'll play the game the way I want. Mm. I personally don't care about skins and shit like that. I'll just go about my own thing. If I unlock some skins, cool. I'll probably use them, but I'm just going to go about my business playing the game the way I want, and if people want to buy microtransactions and get those skins fine as long as it's not impeding on my experience i don't care as soon as it impedes on my experience that's when i care yeah and that's where i say no i'm not playing this anymore mm -hmm. and that's why i've un i have uninstalled many a mobile game <laughs> <laughs> so i mean like overwatch for example overwatch the, the way it does loot boxes i'm fine with it yeah like uh, okay like you I can you can earn them through playing or you could pay money and get right. some extra loot exactly boxes. like again i would I would prefer it if it didn't have any microtransactions, but you know what? If they have to exist, fine. The way Overwatch does it is exactly the way because it needs to it be done. It gives the choice to the player. That's the biggest thing is that... Exactly. And it doesn't push it on you. It, it doesn't strong arm. And that's the other thing is they don't... They don't... You can incentivize loot boxes. Right. But you can't... You can't, 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 can't make it something that is integral to actually playing the game. Exactly, because like the, the biggest thing with loot boxes in Overwatch is you get a loot box every time you level up, which is great. You can open it up and see if you get any cool new skins. And the skins are not necessary to play the game. They just dress up your characters. Yeah, they're just they're fun. They're purely optional. They're just fun little things. And if people want to spend money on it, great. I don't have to, and I personally don't want to. I personally mm -hmm. don't care. I've never spent a dollar in, on microtransactions in Overwatch. All the skins that I have in Overwatch are purely earned through playing the game. Yeah. And I'm personally fine with that as long as I'm having fun playing the game. I mean, again, I don't play Overwatch that much. I play it only when you guys are playing it. Mm -hmm. But it's like whenever we're playing Overwatch together in an online session, it's still fun. Yeah. I don't need the skins to have fun in this game. Yeah. And and at that point, you're you're playing the game because it's fun to play with friends, which is something we also touched on earlier. Yeah, exactly. So, it, but, again, the way Overwatch does it is fine. It's when they strong arm it and they say, no, you can't do this thing until you pay money for the, the like the the, <laughs> the the worst offender by far was metal gear survive you remember that game yeah do you want to know what that game did for microtransactions sure because i never is... i i i saw the red flags a mile away so i i i took a wide berth and so, it's so sad because I, I, I never love metal gear so but... like but but let me get but let me tell you real quick because i i never purchased it and i never would but I, I saw the news story about this. You get one save file. If you want to start a new character in another save file, it's 10 bucks. Oh, no. They <laughs> put a fucking price tag on safe. Oh, Stay. no. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. My God. Like, that's that's how bad microtransactions are getting. And that that's just not cool. That you is know, just so uncool. And it's, it's shit like that that makes people hate mobile gaming. Yeah. Because mobile games are littered with that crap. Oh, yeah. So I, I get it. Look, I get it. Games are expensive to make. And I get I, I get it. You know, Di Diablo Immortal, look, maybe it is a reskin of another game. But you know what? Okay, fine. Maybe it cost millions and millions and millions of dollars to, to make. I'm sure it did. Fine. You got to find ways to monetize it. Fine. All people are saying is don't strong arm it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Don't like if people want to just pay 10 bucks and download the game 
and play it without ever buying a single thing, please incentivize that option. Yeah. Okay? And don't force it on people. Don't shove it in people's faces. Just have it there as an option. Yeah. That, that's all people are saying. They just don't want to be strong-armed or have microtransactions and shit from these mobile games shoved in their face or mm-hmm. advertisements shoved in their face. This is the stuff that gets people away from playing your game. This is what this is what makes people stop being like game fans. Yeah, cuz they don't want to put up with that. They just want to boot up a fun game and have fun playing it. Yeah, they want they want entertainment or a distraction from something. Cuz that's what cuz that's what people play video games for at the end of the day is to relax. get away to relax get away from the real world and have fun in a world that isn't real. And as soon as you put microtransactions and advertisements in their face, it completely destroys the entire reason why people game. Yeah. And that is just not cool. It's one of the reasons I keep all of my old video games that I still have. It's because I can just slap one in, boot it up and have a good time. And I don't have to, I don't have to worry about anything. So, yeah, I mean, again, like, if Blizzard had just kind of made the Diablo Immortal a thing that existed and told people, hey, here's an option for Diablo Immortal, but here's something bigger that you're probably looking forward to, mm-hmm. I think that would have gone over fine. And if you want to monetize Diablo Immortal, fine, just don't shove it in people's faces. Just don't shove it in people's faces and don't strong arm it. Yeah. Don't make it a core part of how to play the game. Okay, that's that's what that that's how you should have handled it. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, like there's a whole bunch of different ways they probably could have handled this better, but the way they handled it overall was just poor, to yeah. put it simply. And just please, 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 reach out to your fans. I'm one of them. <laughs> Trust me, we're a very vocal community. If you want our opinion, we will give it to you. Oh, absolutely. But also remember, when you ask for our opinion, we're probably going to give it with a grain of salt. So don't react emotionally to people saying one yeah, thing just, or it's another. Called, it's called constructive criticism, and there's nothing wrong with but criticism. Please reach out to your fans. They'll let you know what they want. And then it's a very simple thing of just making what they want and they will give you money. <laughs> there you go. It's very much that that meme of Fry is just take my money. It's just <laughs> we, we they know what just we're it's so plain what the fans and the audience want from Blizzard in the game and they're telling you on the forums every single day hey this would be a nice thing and you can't put everything in a game i totally understand yeah you're you're always going you're, there's always going to be an instance of somebody not being fully satisfied and you know what that's fine there's no such thing as a perfect game even the masterpieces of the video game industry have flaws and need improvement as much as i love breath of the wild it was my game of the year last year i can totally see areas of where the game could be better yeah there's that's always the case that's like think of any game that you think is probably the best game of all time i guarantee you has flaws where it could be improved upon there is nothing wrong with hearing out from people saying hey this is a great game however i think this could uh worse use some work i think it could be improved upon here yeah you know and that's that's perfectly fine and just don't 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 go at like don't have these salty responses when people say things like, hey, can we have World of Warcraft vanilla servers? We'll pay you money for it and then come back and say you don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just, that's just don't, why? I, I My brain, like, <laughs> hemorrhages a little bit whenever I hear people make comments like that. Yeah. Because I, I still love the original World of Warcraft and I, I, I used to play on one of those old servers. Mm-hmm. Because I enjoyed that version of the game more than the new stuff. Yeah, it's, and it's nostalgia stuff. Exactly. And that's exactly why people want to go back to the original World of Warcraft. Because it's been 
God, how long has it been? <laughs> it came out in 2004. Yeah, so we're looking at like, you know, close to 15 years almost since the original Vanilla. I mean, that at that point, the original Vanilla Warcraft is essentially kind of like a classic if you yeah. think about it. People, it, and you know what? People love playing classic games, so there you go. And Vanilla World of Warcraft is basically a classic game at this point. So it was just, it was so stupid for Blizzard to make that remark too. But thankfully they are coming out with vanilla world of warcraft servers now they're coming out next year but it took a whole bunch of freaking movements from fans and everything to make them realize that hey this is something you should invest money into because people will pay for it yeah and this is actually something i wanted to ask you i just had this thought do you think potentially the reason that companies are out of touch with their fans is because their fans are actually being too vocal and they can't just sift through all the information that they're getting in a decent way. Yeah. And I'll, yeah, I'll say this. I do think that gamers do have a bad reputation of making themselves seem extremely self-entitled. Um, and I will agree that there are plenty of people in the gaming community who are definitely like that, who, you know, that no matter what you do, you can never fully please them. And to that, to those people, I say, grow up (laughs) that to to put it lightly, grow up. But, um, to, for, but in regards to, there are people in the gaming community who have concerns and criticisms who they give you this criticism, not out of hatred for your company, but But because because they they love your company and they want you to be better. And they want the games to be better. They want you to get better. They want you to be a better company. They want your games to be better. And the way that you're going to get better is by hearing out that criticism and, you know, saying, hey, we hear you guys. We know what you want. We're going to do our best to make this happen. Yeah. But you have to make sure that, A, you don't overpromise something. And, B, you don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exaggerate? No. So you don't want to oversell your product, but you also don't want to. Uh, uh, I'll, I, I, I'll rephrase this whenever I know what. But what I, 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 I think you put it very well right there, just by saying oversell, because what they did was leading up to BlizzCon, they oversell, they oversold. Oh, the Diablo announcement. Th- that That's what it was. Uh, what was it? Don't oversell your game, but also don't put words in the mouth of your fans. <laughs> yeah, that too. But what I was going to say was like what they did, you know, in your term overselling is perfect for this because they oversold the hype of Diablo and people expected something bigger than what they yeah. got. It's just like if Santa Claus showed up at your doorstep and he had a whole sack full of presents on his shoulder and he plops it down right in front of a, a five-year-old and it's just like, oh, I'm going to get something real good from Santa. And then he just kicks you in the face. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It, 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 it probably, probably something like, oh man, I'm going to get a bike for Christmas. Finally. And, and like he has a bag that is shaped like a bike like oh my gosh it's a bike it's a bike it's a bike and then he takes it out and it's just a little like like i don't know hot wheel car or something <laughs> here you go timmy <laughs> good job you oversold your product <laughs> <laughs> we got really passionate on this rogues cast yeah, about that topic. But it's just, well, it's because that's what gamers are. We're very passionate about the community and the industry that yeah. we that we are the consumers of, and we we want pe- we want games to be good and better, and just constantly push the envelope of what it is for interactive media. But God, sometimes people do something that just really gets under your skin. Yeah, like what we're talking about now. This entire situation could have been resolved in such a simple and objective manner, and then you go back to the planning room and be like, okay, they want a mobile version, or they want, okay, we got a mobile version, but they also want something on PC. We know PC is definitely powerful enough to handle it. How can we port it over? 
to yeah. make it work on PC. Again, all, like the only thing you had to do, like literally, all, like if you had this just done something as simple as show off Diablo Immortal and then immediately follow that up with Diablo 4 is coming, that would have settled people. You would have avoided all the backlash if yeah. you had just done that. Because now their attention is now down the road instead of solely focused on this one thing they don't want. Exactly. It's like because I, the I way- go, it's like me going to a restaurant and then they only surf salad. I yep. am a carnivore. I need meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, the, it, again, you know, to, and we've said this a million times, but it has to be stated. There is nothing wrong with this mobile game existing and there's nothing wrong with using it to get Diablo out to more people. There's nothing wrong with that at all, <laughs> but you can't like the way they hyped it up as this massive Diablo reveal and they expected their core fans to love it. That's where they ha- that's where the problem lies and it just shows how out of touch they are with their fans mm-hmm. now. I can appreciate the optimism, but blind optimism is just never a good thing. Yeah. Blizzard, you used to be really in touch with your fans. You need to get back in touch with them because mm-hmm. they are not happy with you right now. Yeah, or else you'll end up like EA and on the perpetual shit list that yeah. everybody gives them. And although you'll and although you'll have a shit ton of money, you won't have any respect. It's just like EA. They have they're the, one of the richest companies in the industry, but nobody respects them. Don't go down that do not go down that route, Blizzard. Don't because you'll lose a lot of love if you do. Mm. So but, but I think that'll wrap up this podcast. I'm yeah, we we got really passionate yeah. on this well, one. It's just it's because it's, it's it's a very passionate uh topic. Yeah. So, but hey, you know what? Let us know in the comments because I know there's some people out there who are kind of defending Blizzard on this, and for legitimate reasons, um, I can't see why you would defend them on this, considering their attitude towards their fan base. But hey, if you think we're wrong and you think that Blizzard is in the right. Let us know. We'd love to hear what your side of the argument is. Yeah. And we'd love to hear, you know, hey, you know, the fan base is overreacting. And here's why I think so. You know, we'd love to hear your side of it. You know, this is just out. These are just our thoughts. And if you disagree and you want to express what you think of the situation, do it. And let's mm-hmm. have it. Let's have a conversation. We yeah. that's the whole that's the whole point of these rogues cast is to have a conversation. Yeah. So with you, the fans. Exactly. So. But anyway, I think that wraps up this whole topic. And uh, yeah, that was quite a passionate. That's mm-hmm. that was probably the most passionate rogues cast we've ever had so far. Mm. So, but it was a good one. So we'll see you guys next time on the next rogues cast. I'm Pro Nazada, and I am hung like a horse. <laughs> you guys have. I'm a good gonna one. rephrase that one. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I am Pro Nazada, and I'm Bumbler. Have a good one.